Hi, I'm Evan Goldstein, your host for Wine Couch TV. In our more classic segments of this program, we'll focus in generally on appellations and varietals. Today, we're going to focus in on the state of Oregon. Now, Oregon, which sits just north to my golden state here in California that we so know and love for so many wines, has also been a key player in wine production since probably the late 60s, early 70s. In fact, one of my uh, all-time favorite wines was David Lett, the late David Lett of Irie Vineyard's 1969 South Block single uh, plot Pinot Noir that he made, which was really a transcending wine in my early Pinot Noir appreciation. Having Having said that, and knowing all the hoopla that exists around Oregon and Pinot Noir, today's show is kind of like Oregon Pinot Noir not. So what's important to note about this wonderful area is throughout their many appellations, which include, of course, the Willamette Valley, where we'll be focusing a little bit of time, but also in the Umpqua Valley, the Applegate River Valley, and the Rogue River Valley, they produce a lot of different wines from a lot of different grape types. It's important to support those that uh, perhaps don't get the press that Pinot Noir does. Uh, the grapes that are probably captured to most people, certainly beyond Pinot Noir, are the Rhone varieties that you're seeing a little bit down in the Umqua, but probably the signature white wine equivalent to the Pinot Noir Red is the Pinot Gris grape. Now, Pinot Gris is the same grape that you find in Italy to make Pinot Grigio, and the same grape, of course, that you find in Alsace to make the eponymous Pinot Gris from Alsace-style uh, wines. So the one we're having from Oregon kind of sits in the middle. I always say that if you want to know what the style of Oregon Pinot Gris is, it's kind of halfway between Alsace and Italy, and then that's what we call the Oregonian style. This wine that we're trying today is from Benton Lane, and it is appellated Oregon. So what this means is that you're allowed legally to blend throughout the state. So although certainly there's going to be a fair amount of this fruit that comes with them in the Willamette Valley, you probably have Pinot Noirs coming from other appellations as well too. Now, Pinot Noirs from Oregon uh, tend to, like their Alsace com um, compadres, have a little bit more texture and a little bit more richness. They're not necessarily as crisp, refreshing, and zippy as those that you find in Italy, nor as sort of really ripe and unctuous like the ones you'd find in Alsace. And this wine has just a little bit of sort of a ripe uh, yellow apple and pear fruit, just a, a touch of sort of a beeswax or candle wax character, and a lovely white floral uh, quality on the uh, nose as well too. No oak whatsoever. Mm. Just a delightful wine. Medium to full in body, again to round texture, a nice kind of crisp apple-y finish, and uh, a super bright acidity. Obviously when you're in Oregon, this is a, a perfect wine to go with a salmon. Uh, it's a dynamite wine. It has the texture and the acidity to go with it, whether you're having it poached, whether you're having it uh, uh, grilled or whether you're having it in any possible way that you want it is the quintessential salmon wine. But it would also go very well with Dungeness crab, which is something that we think of particularly in uh, the San Francisco Bay Area, but Dungeness crab can of course be found um, throughout the Pacific Coast. So a good crab wine, a good salmon wine. The other one that I wanted to show you today, which is probably not hugely um, volumetrically important, but very important to Oregon, is a wine called Gamay Noir. Now this wine is from Celebration, and it's a, a unique grape in the sense that it is the classic grape uh, that you find in Burgundy, in Burgundy, specifically in the appellation of, of Gamay. Now right off the bat, I get this wonderful combination of a light smoky character, beautiful uh, ripe red cherry, Bing cherry, and a slight strawberry character of fruit, a nice spiciness, and just a tone of minerality. If I, if I didn't know, for fact, that this wine came from the Willamette Valley, the Ola area of the Willamette Valley, I could swear for dead on that this was, quote unquote, the real thing coming from Francis Beaujolais area. On the palate, it's again redolent of, of strawberry, raspberry fruit, bright acidity, and classic of the Gamay grape, the classic Gamay grape, very soft, almost transparent uh, tannins. So this wine would be a wonderful wine to have from the same thing. You could have it with that same Dungeness crab. You could have it with that same salmon that we had before, but you could pick up on some other things. You could take that crab, and rather than having it just steamed, you could throw it in chipino. You could take that, that salmon and grill it and almost do that kind of lacquered barbecue uh, treatment that they do up in Oregon that would go really, really well 
And then if you wanted to have it with everything from charcuterie to uh, sandwiches to roast chicken to just about anything, there's very little that True Gamay doesn't go with. So two fun wines, both from Oregon, neither Pinot Noir. And both, by the way, in what I would call that sort of premium price point. So none of them are going to break the bank and offer you really, really good value for the money. Now, before we get out of here this week, Wine Couch Word of the Week. Now, we're going to go back to something I just talked about, back to the future, if you will, with this phraseology of Gamay Noir. Now, Gamay Noir refers to the uh, French traditional Gamay Noir au jus blanc, which means black Gamay with white juice. Now, this red wine uh, grape is the traditional real Gamay that you find in Beaujolais, and it's only planted pretty much in the state of Oregon. In California, we have something called Napa Gamay, which is indeed the French Val de Gay grape, so it's really not the same thing. And we have Gamay Beaujolais, which they proved years ago is actually just a clone of Pinot Noir. So if you want the real thing, if you will, you got to go north uh, outside of Portland and the Willamette and uh, within the state of Oregon, and you'll find it. So that's all we have for today. Um, until then, explore Oregon. Don't drink Pinot Noir. Okay, drink Pinot Noir too, but enjoy some of their other grapes as well. I'll look forward to catching you next time out. Until then, you take care.